Hi everyone, this is Yohan and welcome. In this episode, I would love to share this trifold tea wallet tutorial. This is a great little wallet to carry your favorite tea bags. The finished measurements are approximately three and a half inch by five inch when it's folded like this and when it is open it's about nine and a half inches wide this wallet comes with six tea slots so you can easily fit six standard size tea bags in there you may also put up to two tea bags in each slot so in total you can carry up to 12 tea bags in one wallet which is great especially when you plan on traveling and you don't really care about whatever tea that they've provided in the hotel room or you always have your own preference so this is a great way to go now before we jump into the tutorial i'm gonna do a fun unboxing of two products by hochanda hochanda is the leading craft channel based in the uk dedicated to crafts arts and hobby essentials they do so many awesome crafting demonstration they also do a lot of live stream on facebook and youtube as well and they've got so many products to choose from so go ahead and check them out at hochanda.com now they are giving a special offer to you as customer which is ten dollars off your first order you can go ahead and use this voucher code and that will give you ten dollars off your first order now if you are in the uk or in the europe you may use this discount code that will give you a six british pound off your first order so i hope you enjoyed this little unboxing experience and without further ado let's jump straight into it the first product that we're going to open here is called the fabazine in this box there are 12 exciting projects you can see right away on the front of the box here all the 12 projects that are included in this kit now let's have a look inside to see the contents this one is the magazine which gives you step-by-step -step directions and a list of the materials required for each of the project so the first project that i got here is the mug tidy organizer so you can see the pictures and the directions on the next page the next one is the beach applique panel you can make this panel and use it as a wall hanging or pillow now this one is one of my favorites from this entire kit it's the weaving loom so i've always wanted to learn how to weave but just don't know where to start so i think this project will be a great way for me to learn weaving and i am so excited to try this out very soon next project is the hedgehog pin cushion another favorite of mine this is just too cute i'm going to have to make this really really soon i'll post some pictures on my instagram account so you can see how my creation turned out and then they got the jelly bean lunch bag this one seems to be very quick and easy next project is the quilted tile cushion i believe it comes with three fabric panels ready to go all you need to do is just to add a little bit of details by quilting it now let's see the next one it's the knots and crosses i believe this is some kind of game um, similar to tic-tac-toe in america now let's see what's on the next page it's the forest sewing pouch to hold up your little sewing notions and then they've got the embroidery doodle great way to learn and practice embroidery i'll show you the fabric that comes with it later it's already drawn so you don't have to transfer the design the flappy turtle is just so adorable probably gonna make this one for my son i'm pretty sure he'll like that now the lotus storage box project comes with the template to make this very pretty lotus applique now the last project in this magazine is the spiral cabin backing this project comes with a fabric template that is called the backing i'll show you how it looks just in a little bit now let's see what's inside this bag this is the template for the lotus flower applique pretty large in size you can definitely use this over and over again for different projects this is the mdf board panel it comes with the embroidery hoop for the embroidery doodle project some buttons for the cushion project also some needles and comb for the weaving project these are the buttons for the knots and crosses now if i detach this part i shall get my weaving loom and there you go i like the way they designed this in such efficient way now let's see the remaining contents in this bag here is a fusible webbing for the appliques a little zipper for the sewing pouch some bias tape also for the sewing pouch cotton tape for the knots and crosses and the lunch bag project 
Also some embroidery floss here for the embroidery project. Now let's have a look at the fabric, shall we? So they give you approximately 2 meters of fabric panel for all of the sewing projects. So these are the panels for the hedgehog pin cushion, and these are for the flappy turtle. This one is the panel for the embroidery project. Now this one is the panel for the lunch bag and these are for the sewing pouch. Here is the template for the spiral cabin project. So all of the sewing projects come with the fabric panels that are pretty much ready to go. All you need to do is just to cut the fabric and then assemble as per the instructions. So I think the Fabazine is a great product for you to try out different things without being too overwhelming. Certainly great for beginners, or if you are more experienced, this could just simply be a treat for yourself, something that you can do during your downtime. This whole package is sold at 69.99 US dollars and I believe they've got four issues already. This one that I'm showing you is the second issue. So if you're interested in Fabazine, I will link the product in the description box down below so you can go and check it out. Alright, the next box that we're gonna open is from the Make It Joe variety stash box. This product is described as the ultimate surprise soft craft stash box packed full of fabrics in a variety of designs, weights, sizes, mixed with bits and bobs and more. So let's open this box and see the contents. Alright, the first fabric that I got here is, I believe this is a gingham fabric. A size of a fat quarter, if not larger, in this lovely pink color. Next, I've got another fat quarter size fabric. This is a cotton quilting fabric. I like the leaf print and the color as well. And here I've got a small piece of batting, pretty lofty batting. A little scrap of wool fabric. Now this one is another wool fabric, I believe. I may be wrong in identifying the kind of fabrics, but this does feel like a wool or tweed to me. This is a amount of cut, about 15 inches across, so I think I can make this into an elegant clutch or something. Now this fabric, I'm having a hard time to identify. Um, the right side feels like canvas or linen to me, and the wrong side feels like fleece or batting, so it's padded. I'm pretty sure this is some kind of home decor or upholstery fabric. I don't know exactly what you call this one, so if anybody knows, enlighten me please. Let's see the next item. This is a fusible webbing, cotton quilting fabric, and another cotton quilting fabric. I like the polka dot pattern on this. This one is another one that I'm not sure of. I believe this is a muslin, the heavyweight one. A little scrap of floral fabric. Now in this little plastic bag, there's a bunch of green stuffs. I wasn't sure initially what is this intended for, but as I looked through the contents, I realized that this is a Christmas ornament kit. Or at least that's what I think it is. So they give you a bunch of uh, cards, little scraps of fabrics, pipe cleaners, yarn, they've got ribbons, embroidery floss, felt, some buttons, and some other cute items. I think I'm gonna keep this for next Christmas, so me and my son, we can do Christmas ornament craft together. About a yard of half an inch elastic, small pieces of felt fabric, a scrap of map fabric, this one is a lovely 10 inch square winter theme fabric, a bunch of felt strips, some pom-pom trims, about a yard each, cute cowboy applique. Now this one is one of my favorite, this is a canvas fabric panel. Look how cute it is guys, this is just perfect to make kids items. This one comes in a pretty generous size, about 27 inch across. Another lovely canvas fabric, this is also my favorite, I love the theme and I love the animals. Quite a generous cut as well, about a little over than half a yard. This one is also a canvas or home decor weight fabric in this really cute cat print. Alright, that's it for the fabric. All that is left in this box is a bunch of bits and pieces. Here I've got some ribbons, this cute butterfly applique, so pretty. A thimble and a bunch of buttons, safety pin, and some other little notions. So that's it for the Make It Joe stash box. I think this is a great product if you like to treat yourself for a little surprise box. 
The prices vary depending on the size of the box. This one that I got here is the medium size. I believe the price is about $35.99. I'm not really sure since this product is currently out of stock, but they do have the smaller box at $25.99. I will see if I can find the exact product and I'll link that down below in the description box. Hey, thank you so much for watching the unboxing session. Now let's jump into the tea wallet tutorial. For this project, I used the fabrics from the Make It Joe stash bags. This one I made with canvas fabric and this one I made with cotton quilting fabric and both turned out just as amazing. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and without further ado, let's get started. First, you want to prepare the exterior fabric. Cut a piece of batting about half an inch larger than the exterior fabric. Lay the exterior piece wrong side down. And then go ahead and quilt this as desired. Using my walking foot, I simply run few straight stitches across vertically and horizontally. About an inch and a half distance. And once you've done that, go ahead and trim off all the excess batting. Now we're going to work on the interior of the wallet. Apply fusible woven interfacing to the wrong side of your wallet interior. Now let's rotate this fabric just like that. And then we're going to draw some pleat lines to create the T slots. Draw the pleat lines just like shown on the screen right now. If your fabric has directional print, this side should be the top of your fabric and this side should be the bottom of the fabric. With your fabric facing wrong side up, we're going to start folding from the bottom side or the 3 inch point line. I'm going to use my plastic ruler to help me make the initial crease. If you've got something thinner like metal ruler, it will be much better and more accurate. But since I don't have any, this will do just fine. So I'm aligning my ruler on the 3 inch line and then fold from the bottom edge towards the top. Then I'm going to finger press this first to make the crease and I like to pick to the wrong side just to make sure that my folding line is pretty accurate. And then I'm going to take my iron and press. Now open the fold, find the next line or the one and three quarter inch line and we're going to fold this towards the bottom and this will automatically create the first pleat. Again, we're going to finger press this first and then press with an iron. Now we're going to fold the next line or the 3 inch line towards the top. Pretty much the same way we did with the first line. And then press. Now we're going to open this carefully without messing all the other folds. Then we're going to fold this last remaining line towards the bottom, creating the second pleat. And then press. Now let's flip this to the right side. Have a look and see. Make sure everything is nice and even. If you need to do a little bit of adjustment, you can do so now. Then go ahead and give this a good pressing. Make sure everything is nice and crisp. So you should end up with two pleated slots. Now you want to top stitch the pleated lines and then base stitch the sides to hold the pleats in place. So you want to top stitch the pleat lines with about an eighth of an inch of seam allowance. And then stitch the sides with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. With your fabric marker, you want to draw the dividing lines about three and a half inch distance, just like shown on the screen right now. And then go ahead and stitch on the dividing lines to create the T slots. Now we're going to trim off the bottom part of this fabric so that it will measure 6 inches tall. I'm aligning my ruler at 6 inches point and then trim off the excess fabric. Just make sure that you're not cutting through the bottom pleat. It shouldn't get in the way but just be aware of that. Now lay your exterior fabric right side up. Cut a piece of elastic about 3.5 inches long. Fold the elastic in half to make a loop. And then position that on the left side of your fabric along the edges and of course you want to center the position. Secure that in place with a sewing clip and then sew with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. To position the button you want to measure four and a half inch from the right edge of the fabric. 
put a little mark there making sure that it is centered and aligned with the elastic. Use a small button about 3 quarter of an inch or 1 inch in diameter. Mine is 3 quarter of an inch. And then you want to install the button on that 4 and a half inch point mark. Now it's time to assemble the wallet. Lay your exterior piece right side up. Same position with the elastic at your left hand side. Now lay the interior piece right side down. And of course the upper edges should be touching each other and the lower edges should be touching each other. Align all the edges and then clip them in place. Once you've done that, go ahead and stitch all around, leaving about 4 inches of opening at the bottom part of your wallet to turn this inside out later. And you want to sew with 3 8 of an inch of seam allowance. Trim off all the corners, be careful not to cut through the stitches. Turn your fabric inside out through the opening hole. Poke all the corners, you can use knitting needle, chopstick, point turner or skewer. Now fold the raw edges of the opening hole towards the wrong side, about 3 8 of an inch. And then you can clip or pin this in place. Or you can simply give this a good pressing so the fold will stay in place. Then top stitch all around with 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance. So your wallet is pretty much done at this point. Now you can insert your favorite tea bags into the slots. Fold your wallet just like so. And congratulations, you've got yourself a new tea wallet. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so by clicking the subscribe button below so you won't miss any future upload. And I shall see you next time with another fun sewing and quilting projects. Goodbye.